Chapter 2 Exercising Long boots, gaiters or chaps should be worn when riding to protect the leg. Riding boots should have a suitably defined heel and smooth sole. A helmet should be worn when riding and the chin strap should always be fastened. There are a number of standards of helmets available. The helmet should meet current standards and carry a kite mark of approval. At the time of filming, the latest standard is BSEN 14572-2005. Other standards which are currently accepted are BSEN 1384-1996, BSEN 1384-1997 and PAS 015-1998. Helmets used should be suitable for their purpose. Skull caps should be worn when jumping cross country or racing. Peak helmets may be used for flat work and show jumping. Any helmet which suffers from hard impact should be replaced even if damage is not visible. Wearing a body protector can greatly reduce the risk or level of injury. It is a good idea to wear a body protector when riding, especially when jumping. In many sports it is compulsory for competitors to wear a body protector. Body protectors, like helmets, carry a kite mark symbol and level of approval from the British Equestrian Trade Association, BETA, and those already mentioned. Level 1 is used by jockeys as is lightweight. Jockeys must also wear shoulder pads. Level 2 provides minimum protection and should only be used in low risk situations. Level 3 provides the highest level of safety. It is suitable for everyday riding, competition and working with horses. There is also a lightweight version for riding racehorses on the gallops. Body protectors should be fastened and fitted correctly. The front of the body protector should go below the rib cage by approximately 2.5 cm. The back of the body protector should not touch the saddle. Tack inspection. Check that the stitching of the saddle and bridle is in good condition, that it is not loose or damaged. If any of the stitching is loose or missing, it must be repaired before using the tack. The tree of the saddle should be checked to make sure it is not broken. A saddle with a broken tree should never be used as it is dangerous to both horse and rider. The front arch. If the tree is broken here, the saddle will fit too low on the horse. To check for a break, apply strong hand pressure to the points on each side of the saddle, pressing them together and then pull apart. If there is any movement or noise, then there is a break. The cantle. Check this is totally rigid. If you can twist it, then the tree is broken. The waist. Hold the saddle in front of you, one hand under the cantle and the other under the pommel. Press the pommel in towards your ribs and try to bend the waist by pulling the cantle in towards you. If it bends, then there is a break. The stirrup should be large enough to allow about one centimeter at each side of the rider's foot at the widest part of the foot or boot. The stirrup should not be too wide or their whole foot could slip through. Safety stirrups are recommended to prevent the rider's foot becoming wedged in the stirrup if they fall. Two examples of safety stirrups are shown. Tacking up. Have the horse tied up safely. When putting boots on, never kneel down next to the horse. Stay on your hunches, so if the animal moves, you can get out of the way quickly and safely. Untie your horse and place the reins and martingale, if applicable, over the horse's head so you have control of the horse. Standing on the near side of the horse, put the bridle in your left hand and bring your right hand under the horse's jaw and around in front of the nose. Take the bridle in your right hand, now holding both cheek pieces just below the brow band. Hold the bit in your left hand and gently insert the bit into the horse's mouth. If the horse refuses the bit, place your left thumb gently in the corner of the horse's mouth where there are no teeth. This will open the mouth and allow you to put in the bit. Fasten the throat lash first as this holds the bridle on if anything scares the horse. Four fingers should fit between the throat lash and the horse's cheek. Then tighten the nose band so the two fingers fit between the nose band and the nose. Put the head collar on over the bridle and tie the horse up to put on the saddle or have an assistant hold the horse for you while the saddle is being put on. Make sure the stirrups are run up before putting the saddle on, so the stirrups don't knock against the horse and scare him. Place the numna on the horse's back, then gently position the saddle, slipping it back into place. Attach the girt on the off side, pass the girt under the horse and attach on the near side. 
Stirrup bars must be left open when riding to allow the stirrup to come away in the event of a fall. Mounting. Find a quiet, safe, enclosed space to mount. If you feel it is necessary, have an assistant hold the horse while mounting from the ground or from a mounting block. Check the guard is tight enough and adjust it if required. Let down both stirrups before mounting. Stand on the near side, at the shoulder and face the horse's tail. This is a safe place as the horses can kick out at the rider. Holding the reins and stick in the left hand short enough that the horse won't move forwards. Place your left hand on the withers and use your right hand to hold the stirrup while placing your left foot in it. Then place your right hand over the saddle and grip the skirt on the off side to avoid twisting the tree or injuring the horse's back. Bounce on the right foot and lift into the saddle. The right leg should be swung over the cantle, high enough to clear the horse's hindquarters. Your right hand should be moved to the skirt of the saddle and the body lowered gently into the saddle. Place your right foot in the stirrup, making sure the leather is not twisted. Sort the reins into both hands. Check your girt and tighten as required and adjust your stirrups if needed, keeping both feet in the stirrups throughout. When using a mounting block, walk the horse up next to the block and then mount from the block. Legging up. The assistant should communicate with the rider and both should know the command being used to mount. The assistant must remember to bend their knees to help take the strain off their back and avoid lifting someone who is too heavy for them. The assistant can help the rider find both stirrups and ensure the rider is secure before letting go of the horse. Arena rules. When riding in an arena, the following rules should be adhered to. Pass left hand to left hand. Slower paces work on the inside track and give way to faster paces. Always walk on the inside track. Lateral work gets priority. Warn other arena users before entering or exiting. Communication between riders is vital at all times. If any rider falls off, everyone must halt and wait until the horse has been brought back to control. Do not stand in the doorways of the arena. It is advisable to have someone in the arena who is not mounted to help in case of an accident or if there is a problem. Dismounting. To dismount ensure that the area is quiet, safe and enclosed. Make sure the horse is at a halt. If you feel it is necessary, have an assistant hold your horse while dismounting. Take both feet out of the stirrups. Put the reins and stick in your left hand, which should be on the horse's neck just in front of the withers. Put your right hand on the pommel, lean forward and swing the right leg over the cantle of the saddle avoiding the horse's hindquarters. On landing, ensure the knees are bent to absorb the shock. Run up both stirrups and loosen the girt, keeping hold of the reins at all times. If the horse is not wearing a martingale, bring the reins over the horse's head and lead away to be untacked. Road safety. When on the roads, reflective clothing should be worn by both horse and rider. Under the highway code, riding hats must be worn by children under 14 years of age. Training and exams are available on safe riding on the roads. Lunging. Safety should always take priority when lunging. Accidents are not uncommon as a result of a shying horse, horses turning and running in the direction of the trainer, horses getting caught in the lunge rein, or you getting caught in the lunge rein. These accidents are preventable and when simple steps are taken, both horse and trainer's health and safety can be preserved. When lunging, for your health and safety, it is essential to wear suitable clothing, such as gloves, helmet and boots. Equipment used. The bridle should fit comfortably with the noseband taken off to prevent chaffing. Reins should be removed or rolled to keep them secure and prevent the horse's legs getting caught in them. The cavison should be padded, made of soft material to prevent chaffing. The gel strap should be tightened sufficiently to stop the cheek strap slipping over the face and moving to the horse's eyes, causing the horse to spook or get loose. The noseband must be fastened tightly to prevent rubbing or slipping around the horse's nose. If a cavison is used in conjunction with a bridle, ensure the cavison straps are under the bridle cheek pieces. 
Saddle can be used as normal, but stirrups should be run up securely to prevent banging against the horse's sides. A breast guard is necessary to prevent the saddle slipping backwards. When side reins are being used, they need to be fitted correctly to the guard straps as shown. They should reach to within a fist distance away from the horse's ears. The side reins should not be attached to the bit until the horse is warmed up. As the horse is being worked on a circle, overreach boots and forebrushing boots are necessary to protect the legs and guard against injury and concussion. The lunge rein should be at least 7 metres long which attaches to the middle ring of the cavison. This should be held correctly with even loops so that it can be easily fed out of the hand. The loops should not be too small to avoid being caught around the hand and not so big as to cause the trainer to stand through the loops. The lunge whip should never be lashed or cracked or dragged behind the trainer. When sending the horse out, personal safety is paramount. With assertive body language, send the horse out onto the circle. It is vital that you never step backwards as this may cause the horse to turn into the trainer. When lunging, keep a constant light contact through the lunge rein. The lunge rein should never be allowed to touch the ground. Your voice is very important aid while lunging. When adjusting tack or changing direction, the horse should be halted on the circle and you must walk out to the horse to lead them into the middle of the circle. To summarise, check tack is fitted correctly and well maintained. Never kneel beside the horse. When mounting, stand at the near side shoulder facing the tail as it is out of kicking range. Always keep feet in the stirrups while adjusting leathers. Constant communication between assistants and rider is important. Person legging up must remember to bend knees to prevent back strain. Never give a rider a leg up who is too heavy for you to lift easily. Always remove both feet from the stirrups before dismounting. Never bring the foot over the front of the saddle when dismounting. Bend knees on dismounting. Before lunging, ensure the cavison is fitted correctly. Always be aware of the lunge rein. Make sure your position is always safe.